Hey guys, so the patient I'm going to be going over today uh, has a C8 spinal cord injury and it is an Asia A, so it's a complete spinal cord injury, meaning no sensory or motor innervation below the level of the injury. Uh, as far as muscles go, I'm going to go over just a couple of the ones that uh, you gain at a C8 level. So this patient is going to have fully innervated triceps, which is great for arm extension. They're already going to have um, are going to have their elbow flexors innervated. Uh, they're going to have innervated lats, so they're going to be able to depress their shoulders, and their pectoralis muscles are going to be innervated, so they're going to have good um, pushers and adductors across the body. And then uh, there will be a little bit of finger flexor innervation, so you can uh, provide some hook grasp and things like that. Uh, obviously, the shoulders and um, elbow flexors are all innervated. So uh, the task that I'm going to be going over today uh, that was involved in my video is supine to left sideline rolling. When I'm demonstrating on the mat, um, I'm gonna demonstrate rolling to both sides uh, because patients should be able to roll to either side. So it's not just gonna be only rolling to the left. But uh, what I wanna go over now is some of the compensatory strategies that someone with a C8 neurological level uh, would demonstrate when they are performing supine rolling. And these are the correct strategies that you would use in order to be able to roll with this level of injury. So, um, the first strategy that the patient can use, since they won't have any abdominal muscles um, or trunk muscles to be able to help them with their rolling, is they can grasp their leg with the innervated arm, bring that over the other leg and cross it so they're ready to roll to the side that they're going to. Um, next, what the patient wants to do is hold the arms out extended because they do have use of their triceps and that is going to be perpendicular to their body. And next, what's important is to remember the head arms relationship. So as the arms are moving, the head follows the arms. So um, for the preparation phase of this movement, uh, patients should be rocking side to side with their arms going all the way over like this. And then when they're getting ready to initiate the, boat, the movement, the arms are gonna flick from one side to the other and they're gonna throw those arms. So it's gonna look like this as the patient goes rock side to side and then flings the arms this way, this um, top shoulder is going to protract, which is really important to really drive the hips over so they get into this sideline position. So just to put it all together, arms out extended, rocking side to side here with the head following, and then throwing the arms, protracting this arm until those hips can roll all the way over. So now I want to go over some of um, the barriers that the patient in the video that I watched ran into. Uh, there was a few things that they did right as far as the compensatory strategies, but there are also a lot of things that they were doing incorrectly that is going to be kind of the basis of my treatment goal. So this patient did start with their leg crossed over their other leg, and their arms were extended, but as they were rocking side to side, the motion was only kind of right here in this plane. They weren't getting full motion all the way down and all the way over. So this creates less angular momentum as they're going to initiate their rocking. So when this patient initiated their rocking motion and went to go into sideline, their arms came from here and just sort of fell to the side, leaving their upper body in this position with the hips still down on the mat. And there was no protraction during the execution phase of rolling. So the patient wasn't able to get all the way over into sideline by themselves. The therapist had to grab the hip and move them over. So this patient motion looked sort of like this. The head arms relationship was also not utilized. So the patient was just right here, kind of side to side, and then let the arms fall and didn't protract the shoulder. So they were then moved by the therapist into this position. Okay, so now that we've gone over some of the barriers that this patient's facing uh, trying to produce a roll, I want to go over some of the treatments we're going to do to help this role be more effective and um, some of the progressions and regressions we're going to go through with that. So um, the first big problem that I noticed was the lack of momentum being created, the lack of angular velocity with the arm swings when this patient was initiating um, their rolling motion uh, with their arms going side to side. So the treatment goal for this is that in one week I want the patient to be able to um, utilize a full range of motion and swing their arms from the left all the way over to the right and then back 10 times in a row. Um, and this is going to really help with the forceful and quick initiation of that arm swing as well as some of the endurance with the rocking back and forth. 
So uh, the interven intervention that we're actually going to do to perform this is going to be a parts to hold motion. It's only going to be focused on quick and forceful swinging of the arms, not really rotating the entire hips through, but we just want to work on creating momentum. So what we're going to have the patient do, uh, they don't need to cross their legs because they're not going to roll all the way through, but they're going to put their arms all the way over to one side, utilizing that head and arms relationship. And then, as quickly as they can, they're going to throw their arms to one side and then throw their arms back, back, and forth. So it looks a little ridiculous, but this is really going to help uh, this patient develop some quick and forceful contractions of these upper body uh, muscles. It's going to help them really whip their arms and get used to creating that momentum that's going to spill over into the execution phase when they actually start to do the rolling motion. So this is parts to whole, so it is just focusing on that one key part of the actual entire rolling motion. In order to progress this, we're going to use a TheraBand in order to provide resistance. Um, we're going to use one with the handle because this patient is a C8 um, spinal cord injury. They can have some grip. So normally a therapist would be holding on to the other end of the band in order to create a little resistance. But this patient is going to hold on to the band. Again, keep their arms extended with their head looking towards their arm, and then throw their arms to the other side of their body against the resistance of the band. So during an actual treatment session, the therapist would walk around on the other side so the patient could throw their arms back across and get resistance going either way. This is going to add a strength component to um, our arm swinging motion, and it's obviously going to help them provide some force against resistance. Then to regress this sort of parts of whole training, we're going to have the patient throw their arms all the way across, working on a quick initiation, but have them rest in this position until they're able to throw back across. If they really need to, they can throw up to this position, rest, and then throw their arms back down. This is just going to break down the motion a little bit more and allow some more rest in between as the patient can progress in their endurance and build up to um, just throwing the arms back and forth. So now the other problem that I noticed was during the execution phase of the rolling, and it was the lack of shoulder protraction to create momentum through the execution phase. So my treatment goal for that is that the patient um, in two weeks will show proper upper arm protraction during the execution phase of rolling, and this is gonna be measured by the patient's ability to independently roll to each side. So, in order to um, provide an intervention for this patient, we're going to be using PNF techniques. The first PNF technique we're going to use is uh, replication. So, the patient is going to be in the sideline position with their arm protracted. The therapist is going to be underneath their armpit, pulling back, and the patient is going to perform an isometric contraction, protracting the arm but with no movement. Then, the therapist will cue the patient to relax bring the patient out of this motion a little bit, and then as the therapist continues to resist and pull back, the patient's going to perform an isotonic contraction, moving into that per, um, protraction against resistance. So, replication helps to improve motor learning. It's going to help this patient really understand why that protraction is needed. It's also going to help with um, motor control of the actual protraction. Now, in order to progress this, we're going to utilize a PNF technique called a combination of isotonics. This is just kind of one step up in our PNF techniques, and what it's going to add is a strength component. So um, we're not just working on motor control anymore, we're out also adding strength to shoulder protraction. So the way that's going to work is the patient's going to start uh, not in side line this time, but with their arm across their chest this way. The therapist is going to be resisting, pulling them back underneath the armpit and then the patient's gonna perform concentric protraction against this resistance here. Push, 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 push. Now hold, the therapist is still gonna be pulling back, but now it's gonna be an isometric contraction as the patient holds in this position. And then um, after the hold, the therapist will then switch their grips to the back of the scapula, and the patient will push back into the therapist for an eccentric contraction going back this way. Um, so then, uh, even further progression is going to just put everything together is we're going to take the first intervention that we did with the arm whipping, have the patient throw their arms to the side here, protract against resistance um, concentrically all the way through, and then have them stop, isometric contraction, hold here, 
and then the um, patient after the therapy switches grips will push back against that. So this is going to combine our combination of isotonics with our initiation that's quick and forceful, put together the whole uh, motion so that the patient is actually learning how to roll all the way through with strength. So um, just to regress our uh, pro shoulder projection here for someone who's really not understanding the motion, um, the therapist can utilize rhythmic initiation. During rhythmic initiation, the therapist is doing a lot of the work, so they're um, pushing the arm through protraction, pulling it back, pushing, pulling it back, and then the patient can start to help, you know, like, help me, help me move your arm, help me push back, until the patient's able to actively protract their arm and retract, and um, then we can progress to some of those PNF techniques discussed earlier.